What's up guys, welcome to the Chess Giants, our boy Solomon Rodell, and in today's video we're covering a fascinating Czech defense game played by none other than Michael Adams. Back in the year of 1990s, he was going up against one of the Polgar sisters, Sofia Polgar, who started this thing off with e4, and guys, with the check, we're really starting off with a regular perk, right? We're playing d6, we're playing knight f6, attacking that pawn on e4, but now against knight c3, we're not playing the regular main option of g6, looking to fiend shadow our bishop, but instead this move of c6, which can support b5 later on in the game, but guys, by playing c6, we're we're really trying to get in this move of queen a5, pinning the knight on c3 to the king on e1, which by the way just gives us the free pawn on e4 if white doesn't see it. And the moment that white defends it with a move like bishop d3, which is what was played in the game, we can now play this move of e5 expanding in the center of the board, guys. With the check defense, we are fighting for the center very quickly at move 5, attacking both f4 and d4. And here Sophia decided to just take on e5 and then continue with knight f3. And guys, for you check defense players, my main piece of advice on top of obviously memorizing the theory and really trying to learn the concepts and ideas is when in doubt, play active chess, play aggressive. Guys, we can't in the check play passive moves here like bishop d6 or just kind of try to hang out. We got to play active chess here. This move of bishop g4 was played, pinning this knight on f3 to the queen. So notice now that neither knight can even move. And we now see from white this idea of f takes e5. Now here we do have to be a little bit careful, right? I mean, we obviously don't want to take on e5 because we simply lose our queen for nothing in return. And sure, we can get their queen back, but we're then going to lose a minor piece. Instead, we're just going to play this move of knight fd7, right? Looking to capture back and put even more pressure on this knight on f3 but here Sophia plays the main option of e6 right if you look at master grandmaster level games you're going to see this move e6 quite a bit but against it okay Adams just takes back with the bishop and now against knight g5 plays this move of knight c5 right another key idea if you see a move like knight g5 don't let white just take this bishop on e6 and mess up your pawn structure but be prepared to take back with the knight here white decides to castle kingside sophia really trying to play some active chess here putting some pressure on f7 but adams here just continues with knight bd7 and yet again this move of queen h5 from sophia polgar i mean talk about a ton of pressure on f7 but guys here adams keeps his composure he's like look you are looking to really put some pressure on f7 and you're also threatening this move of knight takes e6 right i mean just for example let's say black here plays a move like a6 white can actually take on e6 right the whole idea being that we can't take with the f pawn because it's pinned and we can't take with the knight because it's pinned to the queen on a5 but guys against this move of queen h5 there's no room or need to panic instead we're just going to play this move g6 right kick this queen out this queen is very dangerous eyeing our both our king really and our queen on a5 so okay let's kick it out and against a move like queen f3 play castling queenside many of you are probably wondering why can't white just take this pawn on f7 well that's actually exactly what white did but guys sophia lost this game very quickly because of it because we're simply able to capture off this knight play knight takes d3 and now the key idea bishop c5 will check guys for you check players guys this is one of the key squares if not the very key square for our dark squared bishop in a ton of lines and variations covering from all the way to a7 down to this king and key square of g1 and guys here white surprisingly plays this move of d4 notice what happens if white instead plays this move of king h1 well now adams would have been able to play a move like rook h f8 simply attacking this queen and guys here white's simply going to lose the queen or try to save it but there's no way for white to hold on to this rook right in fact in this point in the game we're simply having mate in one and this queen is not defending this square see all going back to this position if white plays a move like king h1 adams is able to drop a rook on f8 and we're simply winning so instead we see the idea of d4 and the whole point of this is that once rook f8 is played queen c4 is now seen on the board and guys this pawn on d3 no longer exists because we gave it away so now this queen does defend the rook on f1 and here guys i think that we can learn an important lesson from this next move by grandmaster adams and that is not always just taking a trade right when you see it i see this in big dinner games all the time they see a trade they do the trade they see a piece they can take off the board they take the piece guys we shouldn't always do this now there's times that we should trade there's times that we should take a piece off the board but guys in this case if we take on f1 white's simply able to capture back and we're not going to get the same advantage that we could have if we simply take on c3 first whole idea being if you see a move like queen takes c3 we actually have a mate in one right i mean this queen is babysitting this rook on f1 and white's entire game depends on it and here if white plays a move like b captures on c3 again we're not just going to play the easy move of trading down 
but instead just offer white our queen. We're going to play queen take c3 again. White cannot leave this rook or else they're simply going to lose the game in one move. And here if white continues to try to hold on to the rook with a move like queen e2, well in this case we're simply attacking the rook right in the corner of the board now. We can now trade on f1, take this rook off, and here guys we're simply up six points in material. Completely resignable game for white. See, I'm going back to this position. I mean, when Adam takes on c3, black's just completely crushing this game of move 19, right? I mean, if you take with the queen, we have a maiden one. If you take with the b pawn, we have queen takes c3. And yet again, we're completely crushing that game. You can't take our queen, and we're attacking your rook, queen, and your rook in the corner on a1 as well. So here we see this move of rook captures on f8. And actually, guys, in this position, either one works. We can take with the rook, but we actually see this move of knight captures back from Adams. And here white decides to resign the game. Notice that white is down three points of material and they can even it out right now by taking off this bishop, but it doesn't matter how they do it. We simply have a back rank made idea and white's going to lose the game there. And here if white tries to save themselves with a move like bishop e3, well now they're not just down three points of material, but four followed by a move like queen c3 and guys this position is simply over when you look at those top tier players guys very nice game from adams guys in the check defense very hyper dynamic system we have to put the pressure on white and guys sometimes that means giving up a pawn right i mean going all the way back to this move of queen f3 a lot of players here would start to be really worried and try to hang on to this pawn at all costs maybe start to freak out and play a move like f6 right whole idea being if knight captures back we can take back with our knight guys here we simply castle queenside white can spend all the time they want winning that pawn we're the ones that are now going to attack white's very underdeveloped position right attack that king and now with these rook f8 ideas in the air adams went on to win this game very nicely Thank you guys for watching today's video and special thanks to everyone who has become a patron. My goal is to make this chess thing go full time and y'all are helping me create better chess content and drop it more often. If you'd like to learn the theory behind the check perk, click that video to the left. If you'd like to see my entire openings playlist, click that playlist to the right. Leave a comment down below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.